Um, all right. Uh, let, my point here I was going to make was about um, there's a difference between there is a difference between a compression ratio and boost pressure, boost pressure, which is what I was just talking about with the turbocharger. One's a ratio, and one has to do with pressure, uh, boost pressure. So two different things. Don't get confused on that. Uh, let's see. Let's talk more about displacement. Displacement. What is displacement? The amount of liquid a cylinder displaces during one stroke. So this cylinder that used to sit right here, <laughs> muscle memory, I gotta walk all the way through, through the light, back on camera. The cylinder goes from here to here and it pushes out. How much fluid? That particular one, anybody remember? 50 cubic inches, because it's an 0200 and there were four of them. Or it was an 0300 and there were six of them. So that is how you get displacement of one cylinder and you got to multiply it. Um, but I want to know the displacement of this cylinder and I don't want to fill up it full of water or oil or something. So how can I find the displacement of a cylinder? I don't want to fill it full of water. Yeah. Maths. Found by multiplying, multiplying the area of the area, area of the piston, my notes say cylinder, by the distance, yeah, by the distance the piston travels. times the number of cylinders. Number of cylinders. So it's area. First of all, we have to know the area. And the area is going to be pi times the radius squared. This is going to be my area. Which is the same thing as saying pi times, what is a radius if I have a circle? All right, so the radius is from here to here, right? Okay, so that's the radius. We don't talk radius in engines. Hey, so what's your radius on that thing? We don't say that, do we? We'd say, what's your, what is the what? What's your bore? Got a big bore continental. I don't say I got a big radius continental. It sounds weird. People go, why do you say it like that? So you're right there, that is the bore. So we're always gonna talk about the bore, but the formula is in the radius, right? That's where the FA gets you. They're always gonna give you the bore, and you gotta to remember to divide by, two. divide by two. So it's um, pi times, well, I'm just being redundant there. I don't need to be redundant, so we'll just get rid of that. So we got that. All right, so let's move on. So example, let's work out an example. Okay, I've got, I've got, pen. here we go. I've got a 5.25 inch bore. It's got a four inch stroke. And there are six cylinders. So how am I gonna do that? Well, first I gotta figure out the area. So it's area times stroke, times cylinders. Okay, so the area is pi times the radius squared. So what's my radius? 
Okay, so it's, it would be 5.25 divided by 2, and all of that squared. So 5.25 divided by 2 is? 2.625. 2.625, and that has to be squared. So if we remember math correctly, I think you can plug it in the calculator. That's the wonderful thing about these calculators. I think it'll do it. Pi, oh, will it? Oh, pi times 2.65. Yeah, it will. All right, but you should know the right way to do it. So remember when we do math, we have an order of operation. So it is going to be, the next step is pi times 2.625 squared. We have to do this, this operation here first. So 2.625, and on this calculator, it's the x squared button equals at 6.89 and some change. I can just hit times the pi button equals 21.65. Everybody follow so far with that? I don't usually, anybody who didn't get that? On your calculator, if you have this calculator, all right, you can simply punch in the numbers uh, pi times 2.625 um, and then the x square button and then the equals button. Those are all buttons. And it will, in fact, give you the right answer. So, all right, so we got the area. Now what's next? What's my stroke? Four. four. 21.65 times four equals. It is a 86.6 cubic inches, right? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 86.6. Time. Now what do I got to do? Yeah. Times six. What do I got? 519. 0.6. What do you think that engine is? Continental 520. All right. The trick is the bore. You've got to remember to divide by two. And trust me, when I write tests, I'm just that kind of jerk where I actually figure out, oh, what if you don't divide by two? And I'll figure it all out and I'll put that answer. I have fun doing an Excel sheet making up all the wrong answers. What if they put this? What if they put that? And I get all of the answers you're going to get. And so you're like, I got it. He even has it on the test. Yeah. <laughs> Horsepower. Okay. This is going to be an important thing for us here. Horsepower. What is horsepower? It is work. Well, I know a lot of you are just a lot of work. I don't want to do work. I didn't sign up for that. So definition. Definition. Uh, work equals force times distance. When my son was in college, he's very much like me and we were sitting there eating lunch at the cafeteria at his college and his friend was sitting with us and my son you know goes to bust the table and take my tray and his over to the area and his friend says hey do me a favor would you take my two it's no extra work my son that is literally the definition of work it is force time i'm literally <laughs> take this the force of your bolt time the distance is work so don't tell me it's no so literally the definition right there. Um, so it's force, uh, force times distance. Um, the measurements that we can use are, measurements are the foot pound, foot pound, which is, um, it's one pound of mass raised one foot. Raise one foot. Or, that's one. I haven't got through that. Or horsepower. Horsepower. 
Horsepower is a funny one. Where do we get the word horsepower from? Literally from a horse. It was an English workhorse, must be an English workhorse, not a French or German, that was very specific. Um, workhorse could work at a rate of 500, has everybody got this? Tell me. Could work at a rate of 550 foot pounds per second. What's 550 times 60? Times 60. 33,000 33, or 300 or 33,000 foot pounds per minute. Or 748 watts, correct? That's another class. I don't want to screw with you. All right. I can write that right here. Well, okay, everybody got this? Yes. Yeah. So horsepower. There's a funny story to go with horsepower, but I think I'll save that for another day. It's true. It's about how they came up with horsepower and, and the watt. It was Mr. Watt and how he came up with it and in order to sell his steam engines. All right, um, so horsepower, that was horsepower. So this is the sub under that. So an English, English workhorse um, could do work at a rate of 550 foot pounds, foot pounds per second and 550 times 60 equals 33,000 per minute. So we could do, or 33,000 foot pounds per minute. And that's kind of important to remember that 33,000 because we're gonna look at that here in a little bit. All right, types of horsepower. We have indicated, indicated. That's the power produced in the cylinders without reference to this, uh, friction loss. So power produced, produced in the cylinders, in the cylinders um, without reference to friction loss, without, reference to friction loss. So that's totally theoretical, not real. I'll put that totally theoretical. And we'll just put that is um, done with a formula. Okay, so we have indicated. How are we gonna get this formula? Well, that formula, I kind of lost myself here because I'm jumping around. So we'll just put this one, calculation. Calculation. Calculation is done with the formula called Planck. And I love this formula because it, it gives you kind of a representation of how we get horsepower and how you can increase or decrease it. So it is done like this. The calculation is Planck, P-L-A-N-K. So P is the indicated, indicated mean, meaning average, pressure. And that's in PSI. And what that is, the, it's the average pressure of the cylinder. So you put a pressure gauge in the cylinder, well, it wouldn't really work because in these engines, it's constantly changing, right? It, on, the, on the compression stroke, it's gonna go way up on the compression, then you have the power, it's gonna way up, then you got the intake, it's gonna go way down, then you got the exhaust, it's gonna be somewhere else. And so, but if you look at it during the appropriate times and you plotted out this graph and then you figured it out and say, okay, this is the, average pressure of the cylinder. So, the, and it's something that's gonna be given to you, all right? And then we have L equals length, length of stroke in feet. Go figure, gotta to convert to feet. A is the area, area of piston. That's this in square inches. So, so far, 
if the calculation, and we're going to use these, this formula, um, if we can increase the pressure of the cylinder, we're going to increase the horsepower. How can we increase pressure? Volumetric efficiency, turbocharger, supercharger, um, higher compression pistons, okay? All that. How could we increase it with length? We could have a longer stroke, right? Instead of a, a, something that moves this way, it moves a lot. So longer, taller pistons. Area of piston, increase the bore. Gonna get more horsepower. And is the number of power strokes per minute? That metric on area of piston, square inch, right? Square inch, yeah. Thank you. Yes, square inch. Number of power strokes per minute. What's another way of saying that? RPM. The faster you turn an engine, the more power it's going to be. So, ah, think about that. That's why you downshift your car when you go up the mountains. You need more power. Higher RPM. You just got more power out. And K is the, is the canumber, <laughs> canumber of cylinders. because I don't know why it's K, so I just say it's the K number. Oh, that would have made more sense. <laughs> I like that. All right, so example. Example, we have a six-cylinder engine, six cylinders. Uh, we have a 5.25-inch bore. Uh, four inch stroke, this sounds familiar, um, turning 2,700 RPM with the indicated mean effective pressure, IMEP, of 1,000, I'm sorry, 160 PSI. What is going to be my, my um, horsepower? Now, you can't just add those numbers up. I have the formula here, which I didn't give you. So indicated horsepower, indicated horsepower equals, and I will never com make you commit this to memory. So um, the hell is it? Well, it's P L A N K, all that multiplied divided by 33. Where do I get to 33,000? It's how, how much English workhorse could do in a minute. So it's horsepower we're talking about. All right, so pressure is 160 times the L is in and feet. So it's four inches. Four divided by 12, right? So it's times 0.33 times A is what? Area of, area of the piston. Well, now we got to figure out the area of the piston, which we did before. Area equals pi times the radius squared. We already did it for five and a quarter bore. But what did that end up being? 21.65 times P-L-A-N, the... RPMs, number of power pulses, which is what? Yeah, it was at 2,700. Let's think about that. Number of power strokes per minute. So if I had, if I had a one-cylinder engine, a one-cylinder engine, start simple, one cylinder, it's a four-stroke, and it's doing 2,700 RPMs per minute. How many of those are power strokes? Well, wait a minute. It's a, it's a one-cylinder engine. Just a one-cylinder engine. Okay, let's make it simple. It's a one-cylinder engine. Yes. Okay. How many times does a crankshaft have to go around uh, to do all four events or all five events? Two times around. So one time around is power stroke. So it's 
half. That's what she said. Yep. So it's divided by two. So it's RPM divided by two. I can put that here. RPM divided by two. Does not matter. One, six, eight, a thousand. So 2,700 divided by two. 1350 times the number of cylinders. So if you multiply that together, you should get 9, 2, 5, 9, 2, 7, 2, divided by 33,000 equals. About 280. 280 horsepower. And what did we just calculate? What kind of horsepower is this? Indicated, Indicated which is purely theoretical and does not count for friction loss. There's a lot of friction. Those rings sliding back and forth. Uh, that's the most. The gears sliding back and, uh, together. Um, things turning in bearings. Um, push uh, Rocker arms pushing on, on valves. All kinds of stuff. So then we have uh, brake horsepower. brake horsepower. This is the actual horsepower delivered to, not to the engine, or to the engine. Uh, the crank? Yeah, actual horsepower delivered, I think it's just actually the way to go. It, uh, horsepower delivered, or I could say um, output, output horsepower. And the way it's developed, they call it brake horsepower because they use a thing called a prony brake. It sounds like pony, which would be a less little horse, but it's not. It's prony, prony, and I don't even have a, a, a picture of it. But basically, it's a drum, like a big polished steel drum with some sort of uh, braking apparatus, that, 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 like a cloth that would wrap around it, and they pull it, and they measure that to see how tight they have to get it to... I don't even know how that exactly works. It doesn't make sense to me because if you slow it down at all, that's a drop in horsepower. So I guess it's you, it starts to slow down. They figure out that was the horsepower. So it's a mechanical device that would figure out the horsepower. Or actually, there's another way they do it. They tighten something up on it, and they see what the drag is, and they measure the actual weight of that. It's kind of a weird thing. Um, but they figure that out. So it's actually what's delivered. Um, it is something that is measured. It's measured. Um, It is often expressed as a torque or twisting force. Um, they, they call it pound feet. Notice that's backwards. Pound feet. LB slash FT pound feet. As normally we say foot pounds, this is pound feet, which is kind of strange. And they'd use a dynamometer or a prony brake. And then the last thing then is friction horsepower. And if you think about it, friction horsepower would be the indicated horsepower, right? Which is the theoretical, which what we came up with, um, minus the brake horsepower would have to equal the friction horsepower. Or the brake horsepower plus the friction horsepower would equal the indicated. It was a lot, wasn't it? Well, I got to throw one more at you. <laughs> and that is thrust horsepower. Oops. 
thrust horsepower, which is the engine and propeller combination. which is a function of the brake horsepower. Brake horsepower times the prop efficiency. You know, if you talk about a car, the efficiency of a tire on the road is pretty much 100% as long as you're not slipping. But when we talk about propellers, you know, it's a screw and it's got a pitch to it which we'll talk about next semester, but that pitch has a theoretical pitch and the prop should be like for every revolution, it should move forward like two feet. I'm just making up something. But it doesn't because it slips through the air. So instead of moving forward two feet, it only moves uh, one foot and it's got an efficiency of 50%. And so you're losing that. So it becomes a thrust horsepower as a function of that. So if, even if you were getting 200 horsepower, but you had 50% efficiency of your prop, then you're down to 100 thrust horsepower. So that would not be good. So, all right, what's the takeaway? If any of the following of the plank are increased, the horsepower is going to increase. increase. All right, uh, if we have a higher compression ratio, if we, have a, if we increase our compression ratio, what is my limiting factor to, to doing that? Yeah. Octane. Octane. And engine design, too. You can only push it so far. Um, volumetric efficiency. How can we increase volumetric efficiency? Well, we're going to talk, about, talk a little bit about that. But what was, what was one way I talked about? Valve overlap. Also, increase the size of the intake valve. Intake valves are always bigger than exhaust valves. So trying to get that air in there. Um, let's see. What, I don't know if I mentioned this before, so I'm glad I wrote it down. Okay, so look at the plank. I have limiting factors. I can only boost that pressure up so far, right? Okay, so I'm limited to boosting it by either the turbocharger, which we really haven't talked about, or volumetric efficiency or design of um, the pistons, which gives me um, the ratio, compression ratio. So that's my limiting factor. Length and stroke, that's just a design function, how far they want, want the engine to, to stroke. Uh, the longer that is, the longer the cylinders have to be. Um, the area of the piston, again, design function. Number of power strokes per minute. Well, if just simply increasing the RPM gives me more horsepower, then why do engines, aircraft engines especially, usually top out at 2,700 RPM? I mean, your car is going up to what, 7,000 now? Mm -hmm. Well, why do I have a red line at 2,700? It's for a drive, the propeller can't spin as fast. You can spin it faster, why not? What happens if you spin the prop too fast? Transonic. Hey, you're going to hit that transonic, and that's going to set up harmonic balances that will actually break the propeller. I mean, literally break it off. So you have, you're limited in RPM. So the longer the propeller, the slower it has to be because the tips are moving very fast mm -hmm. as opposed to the hub. Right? If you think about that, the hub moves slow. The tips are moving very fast in that circle. And so you have to limit it to that. And, of course, number of cylinders limiting factors, again, design and length and, and all that kind of stuff. So, all right, let's see. Test tomorrow.